Encounter family. So great to hang out with you. Glad to see you tonight or whenever you watch this. Um, Reese and I had a wonderful vacation. We were on vacation last week, which was really good. And I want to give you this fantastic joke because, again, I set a pretty low bar and then things just get better <laughs> from that place going up. So here's your fantastic joke. I already practiced it, so it should come off pretty well. Last night, I dreamed about drowning in an ocean, because we went to Florida, <laughs> in an ocean made of orange soda. But it took me a while when I woke up to work out that it was just a fantasy. Fantasy. Orange soda? <laughs> Even Tyler is kind of laughing a little bit behind the camera. So you're like, well, maybe, maybe. Anyways, you can just fast forward that part. We'll get to something helpful to you. Um, I'm excited because I know Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, is Pentecost Sunday. And that's the day when we celebrate what I would say the outpouring of Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. We read about it in Acts chapter 2. Really cool, amazing things happened on that day. And I think Reese is going to be talking about it on Sunday. And he already kind of gave me a little preview, so I think you'll really like it. Um, but I just want to think for a couple minutes and maybe explore with you a little bit, who is Holy Spirit? Um, and, you know, I think this is really important for us. Important for us to consider because Jesus said, and he kind of gave his disciples a primer, right? He, an introductory uh, course, if you will to who Holy Spirit is in John 14, 15, and 16. And in this introduction, Jesus tells us about who Holy Spirit is. So when there's this dramatic demonstration on the day of Pentecost, the disciples didn't freak out, like, Ugh! you know, lose the plot when there was, you know, tongues of fire, rushing mighty wind, everybody starts speaking in a weird language. They didn't freak out. They didn't jump out the window and lose it. They were settled in, and, and they seemed... Like, they were okay with it, right? I mean, they went out into the street, and everybody heard glories of God in all these different languages. But it's interesting, because why were the disciples not freaked out about this demonstration? Because I would propose to you, Jesus coached them and taught them ahead of time, who is Holy Spirit? So when we think about celebrating Pentecost, we can celebrate the activities and the demonstration and, and expression but I think it would be helpful to us if we back up the train a little bit and think about who is Holy Spirit. And so, you know, the disciples, it tells us in, in Luke uh, 24 that Jesus told them, wait in Jerusalem till you receive power. And then when you read in Acts chapter 1, you see that he's telling them, hey, in a few days, you're going to have an outpouring of Holy Spirit. And I want you to consider that even though you have this demonstration, the disciples had already received Holy Spirit, in John 20, 22, after Jesus rose from the dead, he said, he breathed on him and said, receive Holy Spirit. And so I want us to be mindful that Holy Spirit is not merely the expression or demonstration, is not just speaking in tongues, is not just prophecy or healing. Those are demonstrations. Those are gifts of the Holy Spirit. But when we think about who is Holy Spirit, um, then we can back up the train and start thinking about relationship. Um, and you can't really have a relationship with somebody unless you kind of know who they are. And so uh, we can know somebody by what they do, but even better than w knowing what they do, it's more important if you really want depth is to know who they are. And so when we think about who is Holy Spirit, I just encourage you, I wrote this totally cool and I just got it. I'm not really stoked on it. This is a shameless advertisement for just a quick second. It's a, a relationship guide called Your Friendship with Holy Spirit. And I'm serious. It just, just, just has come out. And this little guide walks us through not only is who is Holy Spirit, but also how we can cultivate a relationship with Holy Spirit. And you might be watching. And you're like, well, I don't think that's kind of weird. <laughs> How do you have a relationship with someone you can't see, hear, feel, smell, touch? Like, how do you do that? Um, and I think that's a legit, <laughs> that's tricky. How, how, how can we cultivate a relationship with someone intangible, right? Inaudible, invisible. 
And I want to encourage you that it is possible because when you look in, in the Bible and when you watch what God says about Holy Spirit, when you watch what Jesus says to Nicodemus about Holy Spirit, the idea here is that when Jesus left, he sent Holy Spirit. He said, it's better. He told, he told the disciples in John 16, it's better for you that I leave so that Holy Spirit will come. And so we on the planet now, as we walk around, Holy Spirit is present with us. And when Jesus said it, he said, the Holy Spirit will never leave you. So Holy Spirit is always with us in the car as we're sleeping, whether we realize it or recognize or not, we're aware Holy Spirit is always present. That's one of the characteristics of Holy Spirit. So when you recognize that one of the Trinity, one of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one of the Trinity is with us now, with you as you're watching, whatever time you're watching this, Wednesday night or whenever, Holy Spirit is with you. And it is my prayer that you can begin to sense Holy Spirit and be aware. And that's one of the things that I've prayed in, in my relationship growth with Holy Spirit is make me aware of you. I want to be aware. I want to recognize. I want to be sensitive. Um, I don't always have to feel, you know, like the goosebumps or whatever, but just have this sense that you're present. You're present with me. Whether I'm on a vacation or whether I'm in Bangladesh or whether I'm in a business meeting or whether I'm talking with you tonight or today, whenever you're watching this, the Holy Spirit is present with us. But I think also it's important for you to remember as well, when Jesus introduced Holy Spirit in John 14, I believe verse 16, he says, I will send you another helper, another comforter. It's interesting because the word in the Greek, parakaleo, has been translated, you know, probably at least five, seven different ways. The word that, that is translated in the English, people have used words like helper, Comforter, advocate, counselor, advocate, you know, those, those are terms that have been used. And, there, and I, I remember when I was looking at this and first studying it, I was like, well, which one is the right one? <laughs> and I felt Holy Spirit say to me, all. Sarah, stop thinking of me in limited constructs and particularly in terms of finite human to human, but think of me as infinite, that I can be all. I can be your counselor. I can be your advocate. I can be your helper. I can be your comforter. I can be, and Holy Spirit also is our spirit of truth. I can be the illuminator, can turn on the lights, remove the deception, the distortion. And I appreciate that these are just some beginner entry, like things with Holy Spirit. Who's Holy Spirit? But maybe as well, I could ask you to consider not only would I encourage you to have a, a relationship, develop a relationship with Holy Spirit, but I would also ask you to think about for a moment, do you have any obstacles? <laughs> I mean, obstacles as it relates to Holy Spirit. You're like, yeah, I have one obstacle. You never use the article the with Holy Spirit. You're right. I don't use the for Holy Spirit because I believe Holy Spirit is a person, is an entity for a relationship. I don't believe Holy Spirit is an inanimate the object, like the book or the glasses or the phone. I believe Holy Spirit is relational. That's why I don't use the word the Holy Spirit. You're like, well, that's on you. Okay, you're right. It's on me. That's totally fine. However, sometimes we have obstacles as well as it relates to Holy Spirit. One of the obstacles I alluded to it earlier is this whole intangible, invisible, inaudible problem. <laughs> that's an obstacle. And if you're like me, I tell Holy Spirit that fairly often. I'm like, hey, it would help if you were a little bit, something a little bit more accessible because it feels like with all this invisible, inaudible, all that, that it makes you somewhat seemingly inaccessible. And so I've told Holy Spirit that, hey, I need some help. <laughs> Since you're the helper, would you help me? have greater access, greater awareness. If you know how I'm made and you understand my internal wiring and the way I think and perceive things, then help me. If you want to have a relationship with me and you want to have depth and connection with me, then help me. Help me to know you, but also help me to recognize what are my own obstacles. 
So when I think about obstacles, I talked about the whole invisible, inaudible, uh, you know, all that intangible stuff. But I think another obstacle is sometimes we can have some hindrances um, in, in the way we relate to or perceive or approach Holy Spirit, just hindrances from maybe some of the things that we've observed um, with people, right? Sometimes some people have made Holy Spirit um, kind of weird, <laughs> not just kind of weird. I remember thinking for a long time, I was like, no, this Holy Spirit stuff is just too kooky, freaky, wacky. Um, so I had some obstacles, some hurdles to overcome. And I came to see that some of those obstacles were from people that were misrepresenting Holy Spirit. And I was like, that's, <laughs> that's all right. Um, but also I had some of my own obstacles, right? So I had some obstacles in my thinking because I was, you know, I, did, I wanted to understand logic, thinking, understanding, you know, rational. And, and I felt like Holy Spirit said to me, you know, Sarah, you're going to have to overcome some of those obstacles, some of your rational perceptions. I've got to understand something in order to accept it. Um, and so these were some of the obstacles that I have, have worked through or am working through with Holy Spirit helping me. And so I propose those to you because I think each of us, we have our own versions of, of obstacles. I think sometimes we think Holy Spirit might be something the Holy Spirit is not. Um, I think sometimes we have this idea that Holy Spirit is a, like a power cord, right? So you just plug him in and boom, you got explosive power, dynamite, you know, all this stuff. And I think that's absolutely a possibility for sure. And I wouldn't argue that. However, if that's all Holy Spirit is, is a, is a power cord, then I think we're missing a very significant component of relationship and connection. And so when you think about Holy Spirit, I'd give you just maybe a little bit of homework to consider. And you might have heard me talk about this before. Um, and of course, you know, love for you to get this. I don't think, actually, I looked on Amazon. I don't think you can get it yet. So I'm just teasing you, right? You're like, that's just rude. I agree. But you know me, so it is kind of goes with that little rude piece in me. But as we think about concluding, I would just leave you with this exercise that you might want to consider. Maybe you've done it before because this isn't anything new that I've said, but I think it's absolutely worth doing, particularly as we lead into Pentecost Sunday. So I would encourage you as we finish, go through Romans chapter 8 and take a moment to circle or highlight or do something to find every place where Paul talks about spirit and specifically Holy Spirit. So he goes through this and he talks and he says, the spirit. And you're like, well, that's, you know, Paul uses an article. How come you don't, Sarah? Well, because I'm not Paul. I know it's subtle, but there's a big difference. And here's my deal. When you do this circling thing, this little exercise, finding all the highlighting where it says Holy Spirit, here in my Bible, you'll see I highlighted everything orange that referenced Holy Spirit. And when you do this, you're going to see that there's a whole lot of Holy Spirit in here in this chapter that maybe you weren't aware of before. And the next thing I would say, after you highlight all this, then go back and look at the verbs, the action words that go with each mention of Holy Spirit. Because that little exercise right there is going to kind of have some introductory um, components, ingredients for you in terms of connecting with Holy Spirit. And, and it will refresh some things. Some of you have done this before, and it's good to have kind of a refresher to remind you and just to help you kind of walk through and think, okay, who's Holy Spirit? And just as a quick summary as I finish up uh, for the, our time together, the verbs here, and I'm just going to tell them to you real quick, but I'm still going to make you, you're like, oh, I'm going to go back and watch this again. You can, but here are the verbs. First verb is walk. Second verb is mindset, thinking. Third verb is dwelling. The next one is make alive. Next one is to put to death, to be led. Those who are led by Holy Spirit are sons of God. Bears witness, convinces our insight. Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. And Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Nine verbs. So on this cusp of Pentecost, on this eve, few days before, whenever you're watching this, I just encourage you to have some kind of recalibrating, resetting, who's Holy Spirit, who is Holy Spirit, 
Do I have any obstacles? What would those be? And maybe do this kind of little exercise here at the end to say, okay, Holy Spirit, help me have some of these verbs active in my life because of your presence in my life. And I just encourage you as we finish here, let's allow Holy Spirit to fully be himself with and to us, not pieces and parts. The more you know somebody, the, the broader that you get to know them. And sometimes I think there are pieces and parts of people that we don't like, so we tend to not, we shy away from that. But with Holy Spirit, let's not shy away from any part of who Holy Spirit is. Let's be wide open and say, yep, welcome all of who you are, all of what you do, both in terms of gifts and fruits, and most importantly, connection as a family member in the family of God. Because as we finish, I just leave you with this verse. Romans 8, and I think it's 16, it says, Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are God's son, God's daughter. You are family. You are in the family with God. God is your father, loves you deeply. And Holy Spirit pours the love of the Father into your heart because that's who God is. And connecting with Holy Spirit helps us to connect with that love. So God bless you. Have a fantastic day, week, whenever you watch this evening. We love your guts. See you hopefully on Pentecost Sunday. Ciao.